How's it going everyone? Data here. Hope everyone's doing well and welcome back to another Datacast. It's been a little while since I've gotten one of these out, but with the whew, the uh, ongoing events in the NHL, as you can read by this title, surrounding the Chicago Blackhawks organization, I really wanted to put something out. Just I had a lot of thoughts on the topic and I just had to let it out. You can only write so many paragraphs on Twitter or Discord before you got to just let something out. So I thought I'd just record something for all of you this morning, just uh, you know, unfiltered, no cuts, one take type of thing so bear with me and I hope that man I, I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts about this one and I'm looking forward to seeing what the NHL does with this so if you don't already know what happened as it was pretty recent the Chicago Blackhawks with the entire Kyle Beach situation back in 2010 if you don't know much about that I'll encourage you to look that up but Kyle Beach being assaulted by an assistant coach and uh, with then the month, I don't even know how to word it, the emotional trauma that went into it, the bullying, the hazing, the uh, so much within the Blackhawks and the uh, and their farm team organization in the 2010 um, season and causing Kyle Beach to ultimately never be able to play in the NHL. While that coach went on to have his name put on the Stanley Cup, all that uh, got settled in the month of December as the Blackhawks and Kyle Beach reached a settlement. I believe it was a sealed settlement behind closed doors and all that between Kyle Beach and the Blackhawks ownership groups, group, the, uh, the Wurtz family. Um, and then subsequently, the Blackhawks put out a statement here, as you can read on uh, NHL.com, statement from the Chicago Blackhawks, not after the settlement, but all things were ongoing in October of 2021. The Blackhawks said, you know, acknowledge and commend Kyle Beach's courage in coming forward, all that good stuff, got to, you know, check off all the boxes, the PR guy was working hard. But then at the end here, here's what's interesting, that's going to be what we're focusing on today. The Blackhawks say that they have implemented numerous changes and improvements within the organization, including hiring a new leadership team that is committed to winning championships while adhering to the highest ethical, professional, and athletic standards. So then you have Mark Lazarus over here on the of the Athletic, who met with the Blackhawks. They had you know, they had their town hall here, a mid-season update featuring Chairman Rocky Wirtz, CEO Danny Wirtz, his son, and President of Business Ops Jamie Faulkner on the greater vision of the organization moving forward tonight. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. And you can watch it live here at 6 p.m. Fantastic. So, at this conference. Mark Lazarus put, asks a question, and I'm just going to let it play. I will talk about it a little bit in a second. Uh, I'll try it full screen. I know it's obvious, you know, it's coming off Twitter. Probably not. You know, I won't do full screen. It's just, it's not the highest quality. But you can just listen to this question and the subsequent reply. Also, and I think much of what happened to Kyle Beach stemmed from a, a power imbalance between a coach and a player and the powerlessness of a player in that situation. So what are the Blackhawks doing? What have the Blackhawks done? What will the Blackhawks do to empower a player in a similar situation to make sure that doesn't happen again. I'm going to answer the question. I think the report speaks for itself. The people that were involved are no longer here. We're not looking back at 2010. We're looking forward. And we're not going to talk about 2010. I, I know, and I'm not either. And we're not going to talk about what happened. We're moving forward. That is my answer. And what's your next question? I can pick up to what we are doing today. I think no, I don't know. That's none of your business. That's none of your business. What we're going to do today is our business. I don't think it's any of your business. Because I don't think it's any of your business. You don't work for the company. If someone in the company asks that question, we'll answer it. And I think you should get on to the next subject. We're not going to talk about Kyle Beach. We're not going to talk about anything that happened. Now, we're moving on. What more do I have to say? You want to keep asking the same question? Do you hear the same answer? Okay, ask the next question. Okay. Wow, so I got to say, initially, before I heard this, and I just read a couple of sentences where he had said, we're not going to talk about Kyle Beach, I will admit, in the back of my mind, I said, maybe there is that benefit of the doubt where, you know, these are legal proceedings, these are sealed documents, he can't talk about certain things. Maybe there is that wiggle room. But when you listen to this, I'm going to bring it back. We'll go through it like sentence by sentence here. It is, forget tone deaf. It is absolutely ludicrous. 
it is off the rails and it is totally counter the statement that the organization put out just a few months prior. So again, remember, the statement is the Blackhawks have implemented numerous changes and improvements within the organization to, you know, to adhere to the highest ethical, professional and athletic standards. So Mark Lazarus here is asking, hey, I'm just curious, what are those new things and those standards? So let's go through this again. I'm going to break this down a little bit. Power imbalance between a coach and a player, and the powerlessness of a player in that mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. So, what are the Blackhawks doing? What have the Blackhawks done? What will the Blackhawks do when empower a player in a similar situation to make sure that doesn't happen again? So, just asking him, what have you done? What are you doing? And what will you do moving forward? What are these new things that you're bringing into play so that these power imbalances and these things that go that happen silently will not continue to happen? And this, I believe the question was to Danny, the CEO, his son. So already he's swooping in to take a question that wasn't for him. I think the report speaks for itself. Report, okay, so far. Maybe, okay, maybe there's some stuff we missed in the report. The people that were involved are no longer here. Okay, well, you're still here, Bello, so okay. We're not looking back at 2010. We're looking forward. Okay, that's what, sorry, we're looking forward. That's good. Okay, we're looking forward. And we're not going to talk about 2010. And we're not going to talk about 2010. That is where things start to go downhill. Again, I understand. Maybe there are some things you can't talk about. You legally cannot talk about it. But? I, I know, and I'm not either. But I'm not talking about it, and neither am I. So already there's this misunderstanding from Rocky on his side. And we're not going to talk about what happened. Okay, great. We don't want to talk about what happened. Unfortunately, we already know all the dirty details of what did happen. We want to know what are you doing moving forward. Fantastic. Tell me more about it. That is my answer. Okay. So what's your next question? I want to know what you're doing. What we are doing today. I think no, I don't... And then, so his son tries to come in to actually answer the question. Okay, so here's what we're doing today. And he says, no, 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 no. No, that's none of your business. That's none of your business. That is none of your business. The Blackhawks have implemented these changes, and it's none of your business. That's none of your business. None of your business. What we're going to do today is our business. What we're doing today is our business, and you don't work for us, so you don't get to know what we're doing. Just trust us. We're doing it, and it's going to happen, but you don't get to know, and it's none of your business, and I'm disgusted at you for even asking. I don't think it's any of your business, because I don't think it's any of your business. How is it not my business? Because I don't think it's none of your business. That's, the, you know, now we're just going in circles. You don't work for the company. If someone in the company asks that question, we'll answer it. So you're telling me that only... And this is just a ballpark number. I, I doubt it's in the thousands, but only like the few hundred people who work for the Blackhawks are able to know the answer of how can I be put in a good position where I'm not going to be dealt, dealing with this power imbalance and taken advantage of an X, Y, Z. Only once I sign on and like sign a contract to say, okay, I'm here. Now, what's the big surprise? How am I going to be taken well? How am I going to be taken care of well? Now I'm honored with the knowledge of knowing how I'll be taken care of once I sign on and I'm part of the team. And I think you should get on to the next subject. We're not going to talk about Kyle Beach. We're not going to talk about anything that happened. Now we're moving on. What more do I have to say? You want to keep asking the same question? You hear the same answer? Okay, ask the next question. Yeah. This just screams someone who said, okay, I, you know, we, okay, we got in trouble, whatever. The NHL fined us $2 million. I paid it. Now let's just, I don't want to hear about it anymore because it just reminds me of all of those headaches. So keeping that in mind, here's this next question from Phil Thompson. I don't know Phil Thompson, but he's from, okay, he's from the Chicago Tribune. So he's not from, he's not, he's not from the Athletic. He's a local guy. And you know what? I can't say if Mark Lazarus is a local guy or not. He's senior writer for the Athletic. So uh, I can't speak to that. I'm not going to pretend I know everyone in the hockey media world. But here's this next question from Phil Thompson, once again towards Rocky Wirtz. A little mystified here because uh, during the general and block briefing, uh, you guys talked about a change in culture and transparency and demonstrating the, the, the new culture and values um, that are going to protect players and protect the organization uh, in the future. And it seems like the, the second that we asked the question. Very fair that, question. Um, Extremely fair. With resistance. So I'm going to ask it again. I answered it. No, I, don't I, I answered it. And I told you to get off the subject. You didn't I'm not gonna, we're not going to bring up the report. No, you I'm read not, it. We're not and, asking and about the report. We're I know asking you're about talking about what the, what what the, the report new... was talking about, and I told you we're we're moving on. 
We're I don't like people. I, I think you're out of line to ask this line of questions. Why don't you ask about something else? Why don't you ask about the GM? Okay, I will ask why don't you about, do something else? Okay, I will why don't you bring up old, old business? Some of the some of the uh, season ticket holders that I've talked to said that um, they're having trouble maintaining value on their resale because. You know, a lot of people. Is that a fact? Are you, are you, I, I didn't realize my... you're in our ticket part, department. Okay. Well, what I'm on. saying is. Well, come on. Could, Let's if, talk about all the negative stuff. When I talk about your negative. paper and, people, and, what, and what the sports page looks dedicated. like, should I do that? No, these are dedicated. And yeah, you can't fans. even get our they late scores? Whole... Rocky, can I finish my, my question? They say they want to uh, hold on because they value the Blackhawks, but they wanted to phrase some of the costs. You've seen that uh, the attendance has been dipping. Uh, I want to ask why you think it's dipping, and what can they do to maintain their value? So when they renew a package, uh, they can defray some of their costs. That's a fair question. Yes, it is. So Jamie can answer that. So it's a fair question. At the end, he finally accepts it, and he pawns it off to somebody else. But I, I noticed that when Phil Thompson is speaking here, he calls him Rocky. He's from Chicago. I'm sure there's a relationship that goes back a little bit here. So... It's, that makes it even more interesting to see how Rocky snaps and just attacks right away on someone even who he knows a little bit more of. It's not just a stranger. Like, if, let's say he feels attacked by the athletic coming in and trying to ambush his meeting. This is a local guy. So I'm going to go back to one part. I told you to get off the subject. I told you to get off the subject. We're doing these good things. Trust that we're doing them. Now get out of here. And remember, the subject of this meeting was the greater vision of the organization moving forward. Why aren't you going to talk about the GM search? Why aren't you going to talk about this and that? Okay, that's part of it. But is the, organi the, the vision of the organization, well, if you only want to talk about hockey and GM searches, why don't you want to talk about how about make the meeting about the GM search? If you have talk, if the subject is the greater vision of the organization moving forward, and you're like a month and a half removed from this massive settlement, and you had like the you were the biggest you had the biggest black mark on your of all the organizations in the league, like you were more, the Coyotes were more popular than you for all of those months ever since it came out. No offense to the Coyotes, but just to say. Uh, that, is there not some sort of addressing toward... No, we already said that we're moving forward and that we're going to do this good stuff. So I'm not going to keep harping on this. I'm going in circles. But just to say as well, like now, what's the fallout from that? So Thompson is saying the fallout is from all this stuff, people are you know, they're not renewing their season tickets. They're not getting resale value for their tickets. They're having issues with all of that. And the great one, Wayne Gretzky even says, from every point of view, this is just a horrible scenario. What happened to Kyle Beach, as a parent, uh, that's what he's referring to, as a parent, you're sitting there going, my son is 18, he's going to maybe even be drafted by that team, I want to know that my 18-year-old son is going to be protected. Protected. So, you know, obviously the NHL isn't like baseball or something where you go and sign prospects for, from, I don't know, maybe from the Dominican. You have to compete with other teams to sign them. So now if your team doesn't look good, now it's going to hurt signing prospects who are uh, abroad. But for the most part, that's not how the NHL works. Yes, there's some talent that comes over in free agency. I don't know, Nikita Gusev, uh, Shipachov, uh, players like that. But for the most part, your talent is being drafted. So if a player gets drafted, how do you want to keep those prospects from demanding trades or even showing up to camp on day one if these 17 and 18 year olds are being told by their parents and are feeling the fear of their parents who are saying this team says they protect these people this just happened to this guy we have no idea how it's going to be fixed moving forward they just said hey wink wink trust us it's fixed and now i'm going to send my child off to this lion's den I don't understand. So Rocky Wirtz and the organization, I don't know, I, I, I think it's just Rocky himself who released the statement afterwards. Yeah, from Rocky, from the chairman Rocky Wirtz. He's the owner and the chairman of the Wirtz family. So here's the statement here from Big Rocco. He says, tonight at the Blackhawks Town Hall, my response to two questions crossed the line. I want to apologize to the fans and those reporters, and I regret that my response overshadowed the great work this organization is doing moving to move forward. We have the right leaders and right processes in place to create a safe environment for our employees and players. So what's interesting here, forget all the whatever that the PR guy came up with to write here, but they still have not answered the question. We have the leaders and the processes in place. Who are these leaders? What are these processes? And how are we going to be uh, 
I don't even know what the word might be, like a, a stand-up organization moving forward. We have no clue. We have, and people are just ripping in the comments, of course. I pay these PR people, so I'll, you know, I'll let them write the statement. And the responses to these are amazing. You have Thomas Drantz, who is a senior writer for The Athletic covering the Canucks. He says, maybe Rocky Wirtz would treat the catastrophic moral failure of his organization, a failure that enabled a coach his club knew was an abuser to later abuse a minor with due gravity if the NHL had punished him appropriately as opposed to with a $2 million slap on the wrist. And then when you see statements like this, you think back to when all this stuff about Kyle Beach started coming out and Jonathan Taze was going to bat for Rocky Wirtz and players were almost like standing behind him. And when I think about what could the repercussions for all of this be, it's difficult. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the legal ramifications of these things, but it does make me think of Donald Sterling and the LA Clippers back in 2014. Now, that was for things to do with race. That was for uh, a very, uh, like a long trend of things that went back decades, I believe. So it was long overdue. Is this something that goes further back than 2010? Was there Were there more things that happened within the Chicago organization that we don't know about? I can't say. Would I be surprised? No. Is this like enough grounds to force a sale of the team? I don't know that either, but I will be very interested to see what will the NHL do about this because you have an original six franchise that is very, you know, probably bleeding right now. They're not doing very well in the standings. They're doing horribly with a court of public opinion. They're at an all-time low, I believe, possibly even lower than Kyle Beach because there was you know there were moments of yeah we got caught yeah we're sorry we're moving forward and things like that one could argue that to say we got caught and we're going to fix it is not as bad as this where we now say okay we're fixing it trust us we're fixing it now stop talking and let's just move on they never said that before they never said let's move on they always said we wanted to fix it we wanted to moving forward thank you to kyle beach this is the first time we hear something along the lines of drop it it's over not in a legal um, point of view not drop it we can't talk about it because it's in court it's drop it i don't want to hear about it because it reminds you know the rocky words he sees himself and again, I can't speak for him, but the way I understand it is that it seems as though he gets very defensive because he sees himself as a victim in all of this that took place. He wasn't the coach. He wasn't in the locker room, but he's the one that has to deal with the, with the uh, fallout. And he feels as though he is a victim in that sense. He feels as though he shouldn't be having to answer these questions. So when, even though an innocent question comes along with, hey, what are you guys doing moving forward? You put out that statement that said you're moving forward. So what is it? It All those memories come flooding back of how he has been targeted and attacked and uh, you know, possibly for good reason. I, I'm not going to try and say that we should be forgiving Rocky Wirtz because at the, even though it wasn't him who did it, he's in charge as the team owner and chairman. you got to know what's happening in your organization. He feels attacked, just like possibly Jonathan Taze or Joel Quinville, who they weren't the ones that did it, but could they have done more? Should they have done more? Should they have been there? Again, I don't want to go too much into the Kyle Wood situation, but just to say, I'm sure that's where this response comes from. And even with the apology coming out, we still don't know. Even though he says he crossed the line, we still don't know what the Hawks are doing moving forward. So can the team be forced to sell? Can Rocky be forced to step down and let his son, Danny, maybe take over as the as the chairman or what? Because I know that he's the CEO, Danny is, but Rocky's the chairman. Again, I'm not going to get into the legality of all of this, but I'd love to know what do you think the NHL could or should do moving forward with this situation? Personally, I think that they should try and force Wurtz to step away. I don't know if you can force the Wurtz family to sell just off of that I don't think you can I know that you know the, the Coyotes were forced to sell in what was it 2009 when they were forced to sell that's you know the NHL Board of Governors has to vote and all that can you do that just because you're because you're a bad image for the league I'm not sure but it does make me think of the Donald Sterling situation this whole town hall and those two qu answers to those questions incredibly tone deaf incredibly sad and just not good for an organization that was on the bounce back. You know, they settled it. People weren't happy that there was only a $2 million slap on the wrist. While meanwhile, you have the Coyotes breaking, having issues with uh, John Chica and they lose out on draft picks and you have the devils do stuff with Kovalchuk and they lose out on draft picks. And this is, you know, 
$2 million, that's it? For like the third time, I'm going to stop myself because I don't want to get back into the Kyle Beach situation. But this is just wild from Rocky Wirtz and the Chicago Blackhawks organization. Um, I'm sure there are other good sound bites and there's a lot of other good quotes probably that from this situation. Twitter is just eating this up right now. And there's Mark Lazarus is talking a lot about uh, following all this up. He wrote his own uh, column on it. Rocky Wirtz very angrily berates me for asking me how players are going to be empowered. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. We're moving on. You know, for the record, j just the question was only about what we're doing now in the future. Nothing in the past. Unbelievable, unprofessional, and someone who should have known better. That's something else. Uh, it's just a softball kind of question. You know, like when someone asks you, like, hey, are you against racism and assault? That's an easy layup. There's no need to say, well, I'd have to think, uh, why was the person saying those things? Well, this is a layup. This is a softball. You wind up and you crank that one 450 feet, no doubt, or double, double decker over out of the stadium. See you later. There is no room for bobbling it. There is no room for what happened here. And, you know, it's funny how Lazarus finishes his, uh, his quote off right there. The, the exchange, I mean, you said enough right there. That's all we needed to hear. Just a softball question. No double, no secret agenda, no double meaning to the question. It's sad that he took it that way. And Danny Wirtz is trying to fix it up here. And he says, no, that's none of your business. That's none of your business. And there's only so much I can say because I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm going to start going in circles at some point. But, there, you know, Twitter is just just filled with so many good quotes from so many big names right now. James Duthie, Darren Dreger, uh, Pierre Lebrun, all the big names are talking about it. It was never about accountability, says Steve Dangles. It was just about making it go away. And then going to Philip Thompson's page, the reporter who asked that second question, I was very interested to see that after the press conference, uh, here it is, uh, Blackhawk CEO Danny Wirtz approached him to say that he'd be happy to discuss team values and culture and protocols to protect players in the future. So that's why it's not really a team thing. The leader of the team, the image of the team is doing such a bad job, but it, I don't want to go ahead and say that the Blackhawks as a whole are just tone deaf. I think this one guy and probably many others are tone deaf, but that's why they need people like you know, is it bad that it's his son and it's the family? I don't know. I can only speak for what he said and what he has shown me. And what he has shown me is he tried to cut off his dad. He tried to talk to this reporter afterwards. He's showing me good things. I'd much more, I'd be much more um, open to giving Danny Wirtz the chance as the chairman or the owner, whatever you want to call it, the guy who's officially number one over Rocky, who has really shown himself to just be someone who wants to be done with it because he sees himself as someone who got caught in the crosshairs, most likely. That's the way I see it. So, man, that that's, I think, all I got to say on the subject. I don't want to keep going in circles on because there isn't really that much more to say. You think that it's a slam dunk, a softball, you crush that out of the park, but this turned into way more than it had to be, and it could cost Rocky his position, his job, I don't know what. So that's why, down here in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Let's discuss it some more. If you want to have a conversation on it, bring it over to the Discord server, link in the description as well. Love to hear more on that. Uh, if you're not already subscribed as well, it would be a great time to do so, putting out a lot of content, these data casts, NHL 22 franchise mode, any, uh, FIFA 22 career mode, a lot more on the channel. So if you're stopping by for the first time, this would be a great opportunity for you to just check out what we're doing here. Much to do with all things sports related, so I'm sure that you'd have a good time. And if you're on my side, I'm curious, if you don't want to leave a comment, if you think that I am being reasonable, logical, you know, leave a like. And if you think that I am totally out to lunch and that this is being somehow blown out of proportion and that, you know, just let Rocky move on, leave a dislike. I challenge you. I'd be curious. And I, I think YouTube took off dislikes, but at least I'll be able to know. I'm just, you know, I'm, I just want to know from all of you. So thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, I cannot wait to see what the fallout is moving forward into the next few hours, maybe, and even days. So we'll keep note of that as well. Uh, let me know if you'd like to hear more data casts on similar subjects as well. It's not the most common uh, upload on the channel here, but I do enjoy doing them. So I'd like to hear any feedback you have on that as well. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So thank you for taking time to listen, and I will see you then.